This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hello everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Perfumed Fragrant Bunker. Mm. Welcome to Essentially Jacob, where we review perfumes and talk perfumes all the time. So uh, today we're going to be talking Guerlain and we're going to be traveling back in time and uh, we're feeling blue. We're feeling mellow. We're feeling a little bit down. Or are we just feeling poetic as we're shifting through the blue hours of the day? L'Or Bleu is the fragrance we're going to be reading today in its Eau de Parfum concentration 1912. Was it 12? Yeah. 1912 is the year of release. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thumb up this video if you're liking perfume reviews. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks on my main channel. <laughs> Which keeps this channel going as well. And um, Super Deco main channel. It's all in the link below. I'm live streaming live every Saturday on my main channel. Where all of y'alls can come join me. And uh, celebrate and review these fragrances together with me. So thank you to all my co-chatters in the chats right now. Um, so everybody, here we go. Here's a little close-up of L'Or Bleu, L'Or Bleu. Guerlain Eau de Parfum. Batch code. Well, first of all, the form formula code uh, or the formulation code is 11152. Batch code is 0M01. Ah, oh, you guys. Now, this fragrance is super intense in the opening notes. Um, <clears throat> Let me tell you something. I've had this one for quite some time. I have been teasing the review of it throughout my other live streams from time to time. And finally, we're there now. We're there. We're in 1912, even though I look like some weird vampire from the 80s. <laughs> Fluffy, frizzy hair, which doesn't want to do what I want it to do. We fluff it up and it works anyway, kind of. But it ain't about the freaking hair. It's about the perfume. So, listen. 1912, nose behind this one is Jacques Guerlain. Raymond Guerlain designed the bottle. Um... The bottle has gone through several transformations throughout the decades. This one being just the latest iteration that we have today of the bottle, which is quite similar. It's kind of a direct recalling the first uh, bottle with the little upside down heart shaped stopper from uh, the tens. So there is a reminiscence of um, of the original. It, it is recalling the original bottle design from back in the day. As we still can find if we purchase the pure perfume of L'Or Bleu uh, with the little stopper with the hole in the in the middle, the real perforated heart where the little silk ribbon or tassel is kind of woven through. Uh, it's still in production. Well, actually the Guerlain stand uh, that I went to said that they are going to stop or they have already stopped producing the pure perfume. But they were also pointing at Mitsuko, saying that Mitsuko is not in production anymore as a pure perfume. So I don't know what's going on with Guerlain. They're kind of, their distribution is a little bit all over the place at the moment. But it could have to do with the pandemic as well. There could be a lot of reasons as to why certain uh, products are just not um, being um, distributed properly. I don't know. So, but... Eau de Parfum L'Or Bleu. Listen, top notes, anise, neroli, coriander, bergamot, and lemon. Mid notes, heliotrope, carnation, violet, cloves, neroli, ylang-ylang, Bulgarian rose, jasmine, orchid, tuberose. Base notes, iris, vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, tonka bean, musk, vetiver. A whole lot of everything. 
the first times, the first couple of times I applied Lor Bleu, uh, it was not pleasant. It, it delivered a sort of, um, mm, powdery, acidy, shifted feeling of reality. <laughs> By that I mean, I never say the perfume smell dated. I'm not saying that this smells old, but it does smell of something from another time, from another era, where there was a whole different sensibility and sensitivity to fragrances, to what perfume means, how perfume is worn in society. You know, the way we wear perfume in society has changed dramatically uh, in modern times, in modern days. When this perfume was available, there was a whole different art to applying perfume, wearing perfume, dealing with other people who wear perfume in society. It wasn't something that just everybody could wear and afford. Nowadays, even if you don't like perfume, you're still wearing perfume because you're going to have your perfumed shower gel, you're going to wear your perfume deodorant, you're going to have creams that have perfume in them, you're going to wash your laundry in a washing machine with a washing liquid that has perfume in it. We're just so surrounded by perfumes now. You know, back in the day, that was not the case. Back in the, back in the day, if you had a perfume, it was a perfume. That was the, the scent. You would have the Marseillaise soap to wash by hand your clothes or whatever, but there was no smell other than stench <laughs> or extreme opposite of that, which would be these intense fragrances. So Lor Bleu is still very intense for today's standards. I'm probably, I'm thinking that it was probably much more intense back in the day than it is today. However, today in its current formulation, it does deliver something that is pissy, acidy, floral, and powdery at the same time. And first, many times of wearing it, uh, it pushed me away. It gave me a feeling of uh, like a lot of these perfumes from the from the tens and you know bygone eras, there's a sadness about them because we know fragrances and we know when something smells of something that is long gone. Um, th there's a sadness about this one. Now, you know, if we go into detail about what Lor Bleu means to, to Guerlain and uh, this kind of the twilight hour, basically, uh, of, of transitioning from day to night or sometimes from night to midnight, skipping from one day to the next, almost like the witching hour, this kind of laziness, the sadness of something ending. But then again, this, the titillating idea of something that can begin, you know, the fires, the passions burning in the night. So this is kind of that sadness and that kind of the death of something and the hope of something new. That's the thin line that this poetic name of a perfume rides. And it, it kind of slithers its way through. And you would imagine, well, how would that dusk, that twilight moment, that witching hour, how would all of that be envisioned back in the tens, right? Uh, over 110 years, well, 109 years ago. Next year, it's going to be 110. And when you smell it, it's exactly what it is. It delivers that concept, but from 110 years ago. So, of course, it smells dated. Because if we think about the witching hour today, the blue hour of today, the... The, the, the twilight moment of the day, of today. The, the mysteries are different. The longings might be different. The politics are different. The moral is different. The art scene has changed as well. You know, it has some sort of evolution. I want to say devolution, but quite regression, really, of art. Uh, but that's a whole other can of worms. So... So, of course, there's a sadness to this because you smell the blue hour. 
And you know that's not how the blue hour smells today. And it's so sad because it still tries to deliver the concept and the poetry of L'Or Bleu from 1912's concept of what that witching twilight uh, phasing hour is. It's delivering it from back then, but in 2021. So you feel unfazed. You are like kind of, you're like hit away from, it's like it slaps you out of 2021. It says, no, 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 no. This is, you might think this is L'Or Bleu, but it's not because in 2021, it's a totally different concept, poetically speaking. So there's a sadness to this one because it keeps delivering something that is no more. And yet it's still manufactured today and yet it's still material today because it's the fragrance exists and we smell it and yet it keeps repeating itself it keeps trying over and over and over again it's like in a loop it's like it's been stuck in a loop since 1912. formulations aside it doesn't matter if it was reformulated or not reformulated who cares it's in a loop and the fact that it's in a loop is kind of the sad part of this whole construct of a fragrance because it's as if it keeps telling you, hey, I'm dead. Hey, I'm dead. I'm dead. Think of me. I'm dead. Don't forget me. I'm dead. It's almost like a vampire. It has been turned into a vampire. It's like it had its life. It was living and aging. And then it was bitten by a vampire and turned into a vampire. And so it stopped evolving. It, it froze in time. And it started living the life of a vampire. Not aging. No mu mutating. It, it's, it, it remained still in time which is the burden of every vampire. Time keeps passing. People keep come and go and die and fashions change, politics change, morals evolve, and yet the vampire is always still same physique, same look, same aspect as 100 years ago. So this is a very, it's a vampire of a perfume. Because not only does it remain impermutable in time but it also sucks off of your energy like a vampire would suck your blood this one sucks off of your energy of your sensitivity of the world you live in today it feeds off of that it feeds off of your yearning towards something that is long gone it feeds off of that because it can only exist and sustain itself if you keep longing for what has long gone this one can only survive if we keep buying it. Otherwise, Guerlain can't produce it anymore because they don't bring him no money. So there's a very specific, from a perfume standpoint, a vampiric concept of a fragrance released 110 years ago and what that means today. It is, it, it's very fascinating to me. It is like a, it's like a vampire in perfume form. And what is also fascinating is the smell of it. What is mind-boggling is that Guerlain developed a fragrance for nine, from nine, in 1912 almost with that concept in mind of a lonely, isolated, only almost like nomadic type of vampire that would forever roam the lands and earth and would be burdened to always be alone and to see everybody else die, but it lives on forever and ever and ever. And here's the twist. The crazy twist of all of this is that when this one was conceived in 1912, or when it was launched, it already smelled 
of sadness, nostalgia, loneliness, that kind of time of the day where you reflect upon what has happened what has happened throughout the day you 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 reflect upon the end of something it's an uncomfortable smell because it makes you think it's not easy it's not you know like today we're used to perfumes that are easy to wear crowd pleasers panty droppers compliment getters this ain't one of them. This one is for a thinker. This one is for a poet reader or a poet author, for a painter or for who consumes art. This one is for vampires. It's a vampire fragrance for vampires. Vampires should wear L'Or Bleu to rem because they reminisce of, of the life they had once they were mortals. This is a perfume that a vampire wears when a vampire is feeling particularly melancholic and reminisces of the time when they still remember when they were mortal before they were turned into vampires. That's what this is. <laughs> it's a vampire perfume made for vampires. It made me think that Guerlain, Jacques Guerlain, was a, maybe a vampire himself. Is Jacques still alive? Is Jacques still roaming the lands secretly, never dead, forever living? It really made me think of it because th this is, you know, we've been through the decades, the books that have been written on vampires and Dracula, um, the TV shows, the movies that we've seen throughout the, the theater plays, there's so much content created on a yearly basis about vampires and, and, and Dracula. And we're, we're at a point now in our society where we have seen and heard so many iterations and variations on the story of vampires, how they, how they are born, how they're created, what they are, how it all works, the mechanics, the logistics behind it. Like we, we've traveled through so many different iterations and evolutions and reformulations of the story of vampires that we got to a spot where when we smell this one, it's almost as if we, this is a condensation of all of those stories, of all of those iterations, and it delivers this dreamy haze, like when a vampire hypnotizes you to kind of get you, to lure you in before they bite you. This one does the same. It, it's, it's repelling at the beginning, because you're kind of scared when you see a vampire for the first time. But, as I said before, it keeps telling you, hey, I'm dead. Remember me. I'm dead. Remember me. I'm dead. How do we translate what I just said into different words? It's like when a vampire knocks at your window, they're not allowed to enter your house unless, well, according to some legends, unless you don't welcome them in. If you don't welcome a vampire in, it can't come into your home and it's not going to bite you. But they kind of hypnotize you into wanting to welcome them in. They're also very, the sexual tension is high. This one is quite similar. It keeps knocking on your window and uh, it scares you the first time you see it. It's repelling the first time you see it. But it doesn't care that you're repelled. It keeps knocking and it keeps asking to come in and it keeps bugging you. It keeps you guessing. It's uncomfortable just to the right point, but then there's that other element to it that makes it very alluring and very tantalizing you cave in you cave in at a certain point and you do open that window and you do let it in and once you let it in uh it it, it is magical uh because it becomes pleasant comforting all the ingredients you still smell today in modern day perfumery, you know, you do have your jasmine, you do have your iris, you do have your clove, the benzoin, the sandalwood. I mean, all the stuff we, we know from all other per perfumes, from many other perfumes even released today. And yet, there's that uncomfort, that unease, that 
tension in this one that keeps reminding you that it is a vampire. Okay? It's not all pleasant. A little bit of pain can also be pleasant, you know. When it bites you, it's going to hurt a little, but just in the beginning, then you're going to really enjoy it. You know, it's going to kind of drug you. And um, historically speaking, within the context of drugs in the early 10s, 110 years ago, you know, they were experimenting with a lot of drugs and a lot of things were much more possible and readily available as opposed to today. Certain things were even legal back then that are not legal today. So there was this whole concept also of the Far Orient, Europe, especially the decadent, rich, opulent Paris of the time, the Orient was where it's at. The rich could travel to the Orient and back and could, you know, colonialize, colonize, colonialize, <laughs> could colonize whatever they wanted and take all the riches they wanted back with them to, to Europe and would create their own little niche areas and corners where they would have their own little divertissement, their little moments to just kind of be decadent together, celebrate each other and their riches and kind of the notion of oriental fragrance was born in that context of rich Europeans colonizing the rest of the world and doing whatever the hell they wanted to. Very spoiled, very decadent. So oriental smells transported to your it was another form of vampirism it was a form of it was also a vampire attitude of, of europe just taking whatever it wanted from the rest of the world you know and making it their own uh we call that cultural appropriation today back then there was no such thing cultural appropriate who who is she i don't know her so this perfume also smells of that type of entitlement and uh, just it has that arrogance in it just like a vampire would be arrogant as well you know so this perfume has that arrogance in its dna it has that smell of what was considered to be the orient back then this is a light oriental fragrance. this is not shalimar you guys shalimar is the oriental fragrance of guerlain this one has connotations it's a floral fragrance a powdery floral fragrance with in the subterfuge of the fragrance we have the orient and it is it is almost as if guerlain was reflecting upon cultural appropriation and delivered a kind of a yet another fragrance that is orientalized and yet there's some something in here it's as if the orient would be fighting back and saying i'm analyzing you too europeans I'm also taking something from you. It's a weird blend of European concept of perfumery and the Orient. Uh, but it, it is, on so many different levels, a vampire fragrance. Now, current formulation of Le Parfum, it lasts a couple of hours, nothing over five hours. On, on my skin, it's gone after five hours. Um, there's this general kind of lack of intensity, of longevity of these current formulations. Um, I'm going to touch base on other fragrances as well from the range, but for now, when it comes to L'Or Bleu, it, it, it projects like a mofo in the first 40 minutes. It's, it's there, not at arm's length, but you do fill a room with this one. But it kind of mellows down after an hour, hour and a half, and then it kind of starts fading and becoming more powdery, more irisy subtler, uh, softer, uh, it tames itself on the skin, it be, it's less acidy later on, less pissy. And, uh, you know, for example, in the middle notes here, we have Ilang Ilang, but this one never goes into that buttery potential that Ilang Ilang has. Uh, this one stays acidy, this one stays more in the Neroli uh, section. Neroli and jasmine and orchid department and the jasmine is indolic not jean patou's joy type of indolic but that pissy nuance that's the indoles of the jasmine mixed with a bit of vanilla lemon you know it has neroli in the top notes and neroli in the mid notes so there's a lot of that the Roly, which can also go pissy. And it's like Tilda Swinton's 
vampire portrayal in Jim Jarmusch's movie. Uh, I always forget the title. Last Something Alive. It, it's it, it lingers and 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 she's bored of living. She's been living for centuries and but she's hunting the sunset, you know, when the sun is, you know, because they die in the sun. So she's that kind of getting drugged and the haze and the slowness of it all and the awareness that there is no end, um, the decadence of it, the being spoiled of it and from it. That's, that's L'Or Bleu. So from a poetic standpoint and a conceptual standpoint, it's magical because it delivers a vision. It delivers a very clear vision. It delivers a lot of potential for the development of this story. Where is it going to go in the future? How sad can it really get? There's a lot of questions. I love when a perfume opens up more questions than it gives answers. This is definitely one of them. Is it easy to wear after you've worn it a lot? Yes, it, you kind of penetrate that force field that this one has and you get to its core and you kind of don't sense the pissy part of it anymore and it becomes less sad and it turns, the more you wear it, it turns more into a all-round catapult towards the, the past. Um, each one of us perceives the past in different ways as well. So there's also that to take in consideration. What does it mean to you? And how you envision the, the moral of the past and, and how you envision living that past, uh, enjoying that past or not enjoying that past. That's like up to you. Um, to me, past is usually connected to pain. So I tend to see more the darkness of the past rather than the light. And this one hints at potential pain and potential darkness quite a bit, even though it's a very, from its ingredients, very sunny perfume. The, the floral aspect of it elevates it. And yet, there's sadness at the same time. So let me get to your chats. That's my review. Any thoughts? Jesus says, I'd recommend gathering more information on that topic. Oh, so you're talking about somebody else, right? Ah, Audrey says, only lovers left alive. Yes, that's the Jim Jarmusch movie, the vampire movie with Tilda Swinton. Audrey says, I also love the anime Vampire Hunter and Van Helsing. I think I would wear this perfume whilst I watch those. Mm. Oli Soto says, arrogance is the new elegance. In many ways. In many ways it is. And that's why I think this perfume is also very interesting to be worn today again. Black Noise says, absinthe with legit uh, Toujon. Well, absinthe also has, you know, absinthe and anise. And this one does have it. Um, Audrey says, everybody is forgetting True Blood. The first few seasons of that series were bloody amazing. Pardon the pun. True Blood was amazing in the first seasons. I agree with you. Joyce Byrne says, this personification of the perfume is so, so evocative. Wonderful. Thank you, Joyce. Olenka says, uh, best vampire ever is Damon Salvatore. Uh, Damon Salvatore. Dixie Smitherman says, I don't want to smell like a dead person, LOL. Well, a vampire is technically not dead. They're the ever-living. Sarah says, I love the idea of vampire perfumes. Well, this is one of them. Angela Kier Vlog says, now I have an idea on how Luke Evans smells in the Dracula movie. Audrey Jane says, Nosferatu is the most beautiful. Uh, my CC88 says, I'm loving your hair, Jacob. Thank you so much. Maria M says, I love the vampire-esque characterization. Thank you. Tyler says, this description sold me so heavily on this fragrance. <laughs> Try it out first, you guys. Don't blind purchase this one. It's not the cheapest fragrance, okay? Uh, this fragrance might just be for me, says Tyler, but it's, there's a heft to it. It, it makes you sad. It, it, it drags you down. It sucks on your energy. And you gotta learn to live with it in order to love it. It's a very particular 
fragrance. Rara says, Jacob always can sell something, but I loathe, loathe the, the Play-Doh blue. The Play-Doh note is due to the current formulation, Rara. I know what you're talking about. There's something in all of Guerlain, in their older fragrances that are released today. They all, even Liu has a Play-Doh-y thing in the opening. You gotta kind of look past that. It's just some synthetic ingredient that they have to use instead of the natural one or instead of a illegal synthetic one that they were allowed to use in the past. That Play-Doh-y note is a, it's a synthetic component that they have in all of their older perfumes that substitutes something that wasn't there before. But I know exactly what you're talking about. I sense that Play-Doh-y note as well. I didn't mention it in the review because I know that that Play-Doh we know it is not originally intended in this perfume. They just did it because they either wanted to cheap out or they had no other option at the moment. But these synthetics, they're evolving constantly. So give it a year or two. They're going to tweak that for sure. Pauline says, Jean Harlow's favorite perfume alongside Mitsuko was L'Or Bleu. It does remind me a lot of that era. Beautiful and timeless, says Pauline. Well, you guys, thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you've enjoyed it and liked it. If you have, thumb up this video, subscribe to my channel. And um, until next time, never forget, you guys, to never give up on vampire love. Bye. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.